you need to pick me up. So, <laughs> I feel better already. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another happy morning of chemistry with your host, me, Dr. White. Now, a couple important things. A week from this Thursday will be test number two. And later uh, this week or next by next Tuesday, I'll put out T is therapeutic too. And uh, I'll put out more information about test number two. Uh, but I will tell you, test number two historically has always been the lowest average of this, all the tests I give. That's because there's a lot of interesting and challenging material on test number two, which we've covered already. Today, I'm going to do some more. Uh, go over a couple important problems again. If you haven't realized it by now, I like repetition because it's good for your grade and also helps you learn too, which is the important thing. And um, so that's the important thing. The other thing is make sure you're turning in your labs. Turn in your labs, they're easy points. You don't want to lose them. Remember your grades uh, essentially based on your total points. And the lab, this is 11 points apiece, are a lot of points. They're 12 out of 13. For those um, lab equations, we need to- so Be sure to turn in your lab. Speaking here. about labs, due to the fact that since last Thursday or so, I've been, how should I say this, vegetating in my lazy boy. In other words, just sitting there recuperating. I'm behind in labs, bad Dr. White, but hopefully by Monday I'll catch up. So please uh, understand my situation. Enough of me, let's get going. All right. Thumbs up people, do you see one mole of an element equals thank you. All right, let's go through a couple important things you should know. This stuff is from the file in the lecture folder called Important Information Test Number Two. You'll be given this material, these, this file or these pages at the end of test number two. In the past, I made students memorize this, but I finally realized by testing your memory and ability to do chemistry, or should I just be testing your ability to do chemistry. And I have decided just testing your ability to do chemistry. So important thing that you should know or know how to use are these, hang in there. If I don't shut this off, the proofing spell check Microsoft Word doesn't like chemistry. There we go. And let's take a look at two of them right here. One mole of compound equals the molecular weight of the compound in grams, and the molecular weight of a compound is the sum of all atomic weights. Which chapter we are covering right now? I have to write. And I'm gonna let you try one. We've already done this, so I'm gonna put you to work and the question is, how many moles of water are 38.5 grams of water? And let me just remind you, one mole of a compound equals its molecular weight of the compound, and the molecular weight of the compound is the sum of all atomic weights. And with that, your turn.
if you don't have a calculator, just set it up. Remember, on my test, the more work you show, the more likelihood if you make a mistake, I can give you partial credit. I have a question. Sylvia, what did you just do? I was curious how you wrote on my screen. I have no idea. I'm on it, the Zoom meeting from my cell phone, and I hit like an edit Hold button. On, I didn't have my speaker on. Say it again. Sorry, I didn't have my speaker on. It's OK. Sorry. I'm on my cell phone, and there was like an edit button, and I hit it. Oh, I'm really not going to be sorry about it. I was just curious. That's yeah. happened before. <laughs> now I know what happened. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Now, for those who finish early, please be patient. Once you are finished, give me a thumbs up or smile if you have your video on. All right, I'll give you a minute more. All right, let's do this. And the question is, when you see this question, I recommend figuring out what are you trying to find? 
And the answer is, as soon as this goes away, hold on. All right, you're trying to find how many moles of water. So I like to do this. What are you given? 38.5 grams of water. And now it's time to use, oh, I haven't done it in a long time. Your good buddy, <laughs> your good friend, unit analysis. Oh, I feel better already. And the only number you have to work with is this. And what answer do you want? What units do you want your answer in? Well, you figured that out here. And that's moles of water. Now, if I had a magic ratio, not magic, it's chemistry. How do I figure that out? By using unit analysis. Whatever you're trying to get to goes on top. Whatever you're trying to get rid of goes underneath this ratio. And therefore on top, I'll put moles of water. Underneath, I'll put grams of water. And where do we get the numbers that go in there? Well, if you look at important information, one mole of a compound equals the molecular weight of that compound in grams. And the molecular weight of the compound is the sum of all atomic weights in that compound. So we need the molecular weight of water. I'll write it over here, MW short for molecular weight. And we have in water, notice two hydrogen, one oxygen, two, and I gave this to you, but you should know how to use the periodic table to get atomic weights. Remember, we're using three significant figures. So that's for hydrogen, 1.01. For oxygen, that's 16.0. Do the math, one and two are exact numbers. This is the sum of all atomic weights. I'll add them up. Remember, you get the same number of significant figures to write or pass the decimal as the number with the fewest significant figures. This has one past the decimal. This has two, which is smaller. And I hope we all picked one. So how do you round past the decimal to one significant figure? You keep the zero, use two to round off. That's four or less, I drop it. So for every one mole of water, there's 18.0 grams of water. Now, before I pick up my calculator, I'm going to say grams of water divided by grams of water. Remember, anything divided by itself equals one. And therefore, these cancel out. I'm left with the units I want, moles of water. Yay, I think I'm on the right track. Now, this is three significant, three. This is an exact number one, it's part of a definition. And now it's time for me to go to my calculator. Some of you all remember to format this ahead of a lecture. By the way, I do the same thing in a lecture in a classroom, forget to format it.
everybody see my spreadsheet? Nope. Zoom tells me you should see it. Now you see my spreadsheet. Thank you. Now, if you look at this number, I'm going to let you round it off to three significant figures because that's what the answer should be. I'll give you 4.8 seconds. One, I got a slow watch. Two, three, four, four point six. It skips to four point eight times up. All right, three significant figures. Keep the two, keep the one, keep the three. That's our three significant figures. Use the eight to round off. Is that four or less or five or higher? And eh, time's up. It's five or higher, so I drop this and everything else, the number in front of it. I increase by one, so that would be 2.14. And therefore, my answer here would be 2.14 moles of water. Now, let's continue on. Here we have a balanced chemical equation. And before I do this, time for a public service announcement from your host, me, Dr. White. This Thursday, I'll go through the balanced chemical equations problem set. I believe that's labeled chapter seven. Next Tuesday, I'll do chapter eight problem set. And I'll also do my world famous review for the next test. This case, test number two keep up, do the practice problems. They'll allow you to do good on test two, which I hope each and every one of you do. But practice makes perfect. Next thing, and this has nothing to do with chemistry, but I say this every time we have an election in Illinois, especially this is probably the most important election of my lifetime, that brave men and women have died so you can vote. If you're over, I believe in the state of Illinois, it's 18. If you're at the proper age to vote, make sure you're registered. I'm not sure what the cutoff for registration is in Illinois. I registered a long time ago, a long, long time ago. But be sure to vote. I got my absentee ballot and I'll be getting it in this week. You should vote too. Like I said, many, many, many brave men and women have died. So we have the freedom to vote. Please vote. All right, let's continue on with chemistry. Now, you all see the balanced chemical equation? Thumbs up people. Thank you. All right, 10 points. You're given this balanced chemical equation. And the question is, how many grams of oxygen are needed to react? This one I'll do myself, then you know I'm gonna share the fun. How many grams of oxygen are needed to react with an excess of hydrogen to make 45.6 grams of water? So what are we being asked to find? 
Let me move this up a little because I'm going to need all the space in the world. We're trying to find how many grams of oxygen. What are we given? 45.6 grams of water. We're also given this balanced chemical equation. Now, first of all, as soon as you see excess of one of the substances in a chemical equation problem, you can ignore it. So I'm going to ignore the hydrogen. I did. And now this, this, and this is all we need to solve the problem except for one more thing. There is no way I can go from grams to grams of anything in a problem like this. You can't do it. You need three steps. And if we look at important information, notice we're using mass calculations, mass is weight. And if we look here in important information, you have mass calculations for reactions. Here are your three steps. And first step, whatever you're given the mass of the weight, you have to convert to moles. Second step, whatever you've got from moles, you just calculated. Oh, that's weird. I wonder why my pen changed colors. Today's not Friday the 13th, is it? No. Moles of A to moles of what you're trying to find in grams. And then the third step, whatever you just calculated moles of, you convert back to grams of that, grams of B. So let's look at the problem we're working on. So step number one, the only thing we're given in weight is water, grams of A to moles of A. In this case, A is whatever you're given the weight of. So I want to go from 45.6 grams of water to moles of water. And now you can use your good buddy, your good friend, unit analysis, whatever you're trying to go to, gets on top of the ratio, whatever you're trying to get rid of, goes underneath and now write those in that ratio, the units. And where do I get that? If you look here, one mole of a compound equals its molecular weight in grams and the molecular weight of a compound is the sum of all atomic weights. So one mole equals the molecular weight of water. And if you notice up here, we just did it. So it's 18.0. Remember, molecular weight is the sum of all atomic weights. And Dr. White forgot to do something which he should have, and that's write down this number. And we have this number. Now, as I mentioned before, there's two philosophies rounding off on a multi-step problem like this. 
One is wait till the end. The other is each step. I'm an each step person. And here's what we get. Now, We come over here. We have 2.53 moles. And now, are we done? No, we're trying to get to grams of oxygen. So now it's time for step two. And if we look at the important information for test number two, step two is convert moles of A, which in this case is water, to moles of B, which in this case is oxygen. So we want to go moles of A to moles of B. And where do we get that number? From here. The balanced chemical equation tells us two moles of hydrogen, when there's no number, it's number one, reacts with one mole of oxygen to make two moles of water. All right, so what do we want to do? We want to go from 2.53 moles of water to moles of B. What's B? What we're trying to get to, which is oxygen. And now we'll use our good buddy, our good friend, unit analysis again. Whatever we're trying to get to goes on top of the ratio. Whatever we're trying to get rid of goes underneath. And where do we get that number? Good question. Where do we find a ratio of moles of oxygen to moles of water? At the top here at your balanced chemical equation. Remember, when there's no number, it's number one. So for every one mole of oxygen, that's an ugly looking one. That's better. For every one mole of oxygen, we make two moles of water. For every one mole of oxygen, we make two moles of water. Now, remember, these are exact numbers. And the only number in this equation will be three significant figures. So our answer should be three significant figures. So now it's time for me to go to my spreadsheet. And in A, column A, I'll wait till the very end. In column B, this number, I'm going to round off to three significant figures. I'll let you try it first. Time's up. That should be 1.27. Oops, wrong thing. And this is what we have. Are we done? No, we have moles of oxygen. And now we want to get two grams of oxygen. Now, how do we do that? Step number three. Where do we find that? 
you go to important information. Everybody see important information, reaction calculator, thank you. All right, step three, whatever we have moles of, we convert to grams of that. And now if I go back to my whiteboard, step three is moles of B to mole grams of B. In this case, what's B? Oxygen. We have 1.27 moles of oxygen. What are we trying to get to? Grams of oxygen, because that's what our final answer is. We want grams of oxygen. And once again, we'll use our good buddy, our good friend, unit analysis, whatever we're trying to get to goes on top of the ratio. Whatever we're trying to get rid of goes underneath. Here I have grams of oxygen. Here I have moles of oxygen. And before, and I forgot to do it in step two, but I'll do it here. Check to make sure moles divided by moles of oxygen cancel out. I'm left with the right units I want my answer in. Where do we get that, those numbers in the ratio? One mole of a compound equals the molecular weight of that compound in grams. And the molecular weight of that compound is the sum of all atomic weights. And what's the molecular weight in grams of oxygen? Well, I've got two oxygen atoms, each one to three significant figures is 16.0. I'm gonna do the math in my head. Hopefully I got it right. That's 32.0. So for every one mole of oxygen, there's 32.0 grams of oxygen. And now if we look at this, we have one, three significant figures. This is three significant. The one is exact number. Our answer should have three significant figures and our units cancel out. So I'm gonna go back to my calculator. And now multiply this times 32.0. Do the same over here. No, let's do the same. And now I round both of these off to three significant figures. Now in column A, doing it at the end, I would get 40.5. In column C, I would get 40.6 which is the right answer, both would be on my test. And on my answer key, when we go over this, I would have here, and those would, that would be the correct answer. All right. Now let's go back and look what we did. We're given this balanced chemical equation. We figured out we're trying to find how many grams of oxygen are needed to make these many grams of water. You can't do it in one step. You have to do it in three steps. The first step, grams of whatever you're given, in this case water, you convert to moles. Remember one mole of a compound equals the molecular weight of that compound in grams. Use unit analysis to figure out this ratio, the molecular weight of water, which we figured in the previous problem, which is the sum of all atomic weights, is 18.0. That's where I got this number. We did the math. And we now have 2.53 moles of water. The second step, whatever we just figured the moles of water, we convert to moles of the final answer, in this case, oxygen. 
And we start with moles of water. We're trying to get the moles of oxygen. Use unit analysis to go right here, put this on top, this underneath, and then now where do you get the numbers that go in there? Remember for a balanced chemical equation, the coefficients, the number in front, tell you molar ratios or molar amounts. Two moles of hydrogen, when there's no number, it's the number one. One mole of oxygen makes two moles of water. So in here we can put one mole of oxygen makes two moles of water, or not makes, per two moles of water. And now moles of water divided by moles of water equal one, cancel out. These are exact numbers because you can't have a fraction of a molecule. So the only number that figures into how many significant figures is this number. And here we have 2.53 moles of water. So that's going to be three significant, our answer. We now have moles of oxygen. Are we done? No, because we're trying to get the grams of oxygen. And now, time for Dr. White to take a tea break. This mole stuff is thirsty work. And now we want to go moles of B to grams of B, which is what we want our answer. In this case, B is oxygen. So we want to start with moles of oxygen, which we just figured out. We want to go to grams of oxygen. Once again, we'll use our good buddy, our good friend, unit analysis, whatever we're trying to get to. We put on top, whatever we're trying to get rid of, we put underneath. Where do we get these numbers? One mole of a compound equals its molecular weight in grams, molecular weight of oxygen gas, O2, two oxygens, two times 16.2 equals 32.0. And therefore, one per 32.0 grams Notice moles of oxygen divided by moles of oxygen. Yeah, moles of oxygen divided by moles of oxygen cancel out. I'm left with grams of oxygen, three significant three. Now, if you round off at each step, you get 40.6. If you round off at the end, you get 40.5. Both answers are correct. And that's how you do it. Now, because of my back, I'm going to take a little longer uh, break because I need to stretch it because the muscles are tightening up. Oh, no. But anyways, see, even when always don't let your humor go. But I'll see you at 1050. Let's take a little more longer break. And I'll see you in a couple minutes. Take a break.
Time to start again. Good news, I'm still alive. All right. Let's do another one. What I'm going to do is stepwise. I'm going to let you try each step alone. Hold on one sec. Did I ever tell you? No, I haven't. I'm going to do a winky dink on you. Winky dink? Well, I just did a generation gap on you. When I was a little kid, real little, like about six or seven, one of the most popular shows on TV was called Winky Dink. And Winky Dink was this boy whose head was a star. Don't ask. It was, there were strange things on TV. Well, there are strange things on TV now. And snark cartoons, but I shouldn't get into politics. But anyways, uh, and Winky Dink, one of the important things is you sent in, it was a small amount of money, and you got back, actually your parents did, a piece of plastic and a grease marker. And you put the plastic, and this is back when we had uh, TVs that were glass tubes. You put that on there, and during the cartoon, you would be asked, kids, Winky Dink is trying to get out of the ship hole, uh, out of the hold of the ship. Draw the ladder in so he can get out. And there'd be a little dotted line where you drew on here. And then afterward, you'd erase it. I think they gave you a piece of cloth too. And then you go on with the story. And later on, you'd be asked to draw something else. And I'm going to do a Winky Dink on you. By the way, my best friend when I was about six, I haven't seen him in decades. I hope he's still alive. Dickie Gale forgot to put the plastic on the TV. Oh, were his parents mad. So anyways, I'm gonna do a winky dink on you. Thumbs up people, can you see this? Thank you. If we look at this, let me read it in case you haven't learned how to decipher my handwriting. How many grams of ammonia and H3 are made when you react 42.61 grams of nitrogen with an excess of hydrogen? So first thing I'm going to ask you to do right here, it's winky dink time. Everybody help Dr. White out right down there on your piece of paper. What are you being asked to find? What are you given? Go. Hurry up, the clock is ticking. Actually, I don't think I have my house anymore, a clock that ticks. They're all digital. All right. Uh, time's up. What are you being asked to find? How many grams of ammonia? What are you given? 42.61 grams of nitrogen. You're also given this balanced chemical equation, which we'll need later. Now, 
You can't do this in one step because you're going from grams to grams of a balanced chemical equation. So you need three steps. Now, let me give you some information that you should be able to find yourself, which some you might need now, some you might need later. Here are the atomic weights of nitrogen and hydrogen. Now, let's take a look at this. If we look at this balanced chemical equation and you're going from a weight to a weight, what that means is I got to move so my back doesn't kill me. But what that means is you look here and you're doing a mass or weight calculation for reactions. And the first step is mass of A to moles of A. Remember, mass is another way of saying weight. And why don't you try and set that up yourself now? This is first step. Step one, you got to figure out what is A and how do you convert that to moles. Hint, use your good buddy, your good friend, unit analysis. Your turn. And when you're done, give me a thumbs up or turn on your video and smile. I see all my regulars are here this morning. And those who are not, don't forget to watch the video. <laughs> if you were not watching the video, you wouldn't have heard me. If you don't have your calculator, just set it up. I've got mine, so I can help you out. All right. Anybody need more time? Going once, scream if you do. No, don't scream. All right. I'll give you another 22.5 seconds. Go. This time I'm looking at my watch. All right, uh, time's up. Let's see what you should have done or watch so you understand how to do this. And what are we trying to do? If you look up here, we have grams of nitrogen. So we have 42.61 grams of nitrogen, grams of A, 
We want to go to Moles Way. And I'm in the mood. I think I need to pick me up. It's time to use your good buddy, your good friend, even an analysis. And how do you use the analysis? Whatever you're trying to get to goes on top of the ratio. Whatever you're trying to get rid of goes underneath. We have moles of A. Here we have grams of, not A, this should be nitrogen. Grams of nitrogen. And where do we get that information to fill in that ratio? You look at important information, one mole of a compound equals the sum of atomic weights. Or wait, so one mole of a compound equals the molecular weight of that compound, and the molecular weight of the compound is the sum of all atomic weights. So one mole of nitrogen gas, N2, equals its molecular weight. And the molecular weight of nitrogen gas is the sum of all atomic weights, which is two nitrogen. Each nitrogen is 14.0 equals 28.0. And now before I pick this up, notice grams of nitrogen divided by grams of nitrogen cancel out because anything divided by itself equals one cancels out and I'm left with moles of nitrogen. So now I'm going to go to my calculator. Let me clean all this out. And I'm going to take 42.61. Oh, hold on. I always forgot to put the plus there, which you got to do on a spreadsheet. 42.61 divided by 28.0. Now, before I hit it, notice this is four significant, three. Our answer, if we round off at each step, should be three significant figures. I'm going to let you round this off to three significant figures then I'll do it. You got 2.7 seconds. One, two, 2.3, 2.5. Time's up. And you keep the one, keep the five, keep the two, use the one to round off. Here are my three significant figures. One is four or less. I drop all this and I get 1.52. Forget about the zeros you'll see there. So I have 1.52 moles of nitrogen gas. Now, am I done? No, I'm trying to get to grams of ammonia. So now I have to do step number two. And if we look at important information, step two is whatever you just calculate the moles of, you convert to moles of your answer, moles of A to moles of B. So step two, In this case, A is nitrogen, B is what we're trying to get to, which if you look up here is ammonia. So we want to go moles of nitrogen to moles. Oh, I gave it away. Of ammonia 
I'll let you figure out the rest of it. Everybody help Dr. White, just like you'd help Winky Dink out what goes in that ratio, not only the units, but look at the numbers. And I'm going to rewrite the balanced chemical equation because it doesn't fit on this page with all the writing Dr. White's doing. because you'll need this. Figure out what goes here and here, both units and numbers. And use your good buddy, your good friend, unit analysis. I'll give you another 20 seconds, 20.00. Ooh, four significant figures. See, most of you are still working on it. I'll wait. Give me a thumbs up when you're ready to go ahead. All right, let's go ahead. So it's time to use your good buddy, your good friend, unit analysis. Remember, I'm going for the Guinness Book of World Record, saying that the most times in one semester, whatever you're trying to get to goes on top. Whatever you're trying to get rid of goes underneath. On top, we want moles of ammonia. Underneath, we want moles of nitrogen. Where do you get these numbers? You look at the balanced chemical equation, and that tells you the coefficients, three moles of hydrogen. When there's no number, it's the number one. React with one mole of nitrogen to make two moles of ammonia. So for every one mole of nitrogen, we make two moles of ammonia. Remember, these are exact numbers. Therefore, I have three significant here. My answer should be three. And I'm going to go back to my calculator. And notice here in column A, I'm going to wait till the very end to round off. In column B, this is already three significant figures. You forget about the zeros after the four, one, two, three. And therefore, that will be this way. Dr. White is a column B person, round off at each step. But I'm not going to force you to do my way on this. I'll let you do whichever one you want. So we now have three, zero, four. moles of ammonia. Am I done? No. Come up here. We're trying to get the grams of ammonia. So now we need step number three, convert moles of B to grams or mass. Whenever you see mass, think of grams, grams of B. And now Dr. White will try and remember, I'm trying to do a winky dink on you. And why don't you set it up all on your own? I'll give you a hint. And that's where you start. Why don't you try and do step three on your own first? Help Dr. White out. Draw on your paper the ladder. No. <laughs> 
I better watch out. I better not scratch too much at the metaphor or bleed. Oh, I did another one. Don't forget important information. It will say one mole of a compound equals the molecular weight of the compound. And the molecular weight of the compound is the sum of all atomic weights. Oh, in case you need it up here, the atomic weight of nitrogen is 14.0. Atomic weight of hydrogen is 1.01, which you should know how to find on the periodic table that I'll give you. I'll give you another 60 seconds, yeah, 65 seconds. Anybody need more time? Everybody's looking down at their papers, so I think you're working on it. If you're done, give me a thumbs up. All right, let's do it. I see a couple of thumbs. All right, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find grams of B. In this case, that's ammonia. We have moles of ammonia. So we're trying to go from moles of whatever we just calculated to grams of what do we need in our final answer. And how do you do that? Use your good buddy, your good friend, unit analysis. Whatever I'm trying to get to goes on top, units. Whatever I'm trying to get rid of go underneath. I'll write that in. 
grams of ammonia and underneath moles of ammonia. And where do we get these numbers? One mole of a compound equals its molecular weight in grams. What's the molecular weight of ammonia? It's the sum of all atomic weights, three hydrogen, one nitrogen, three times 1.01, because that's the atomic weight, which I gave you, but you need to find out on your own from the periodic table, notice hydrogen 1.01, .01, the three significant figures, nitrogen 14.0, and now, if we look at this, we add them up. Remember, you get the same number of significant figures to the right or past the decimal point as the number that has the fewest significant figures past the decimal, this has two, this has one, our answer should have one, keep the zero, use the three to round off, it's four or less, so this is 17.0, notice this is three, this is three, our answer should be three, it's time to go to my calculator. And notice if in column A, if you round off 51.7, 407, et cetera, et cetera, the three significant figures, keep the five, keep the one, keep the seven, use the four to round off, four or less. So this will round off to 51.7. And if we look at this number where we round off at each step, there should be three significant figures, keep the five, keep the one, Keep the six, use the eight to round off. That's five or higher. This gets dropped. The six gets increased by one. And in this case, we also get 51.7 both ways. So sometimes when you round off at each step and round off at the end, you get the same. Sometimes it's slightly different. Dr. White's a round off at each step person. Now, let's look at another important problem you need to know how to do, and that's limiting reactants. All right, let's look at this. You're given a balanced chemical equation, five to six points, sometime in your future. How many moles of water are made if you react 2.417 moles of hydrogen to 1.111 moles of oxygen? And the question is, what do you do? 
And remember last week, I talked about the fact that if you had five pens, bodies, and five, 10 caps, I had five pen bodies and five caps, my total product, which is a cap and a body, if I had 10 of these and five of these, how many total units could I make? And the answer is five. Because once you used all five of these, you still have five left over, but you couldn't make any more total units because this was limiting. Now, how do you do that in chemistry? Good question. And if you look at Can everybody see limiting reactants on your screen now? Thank you. If you look at the important information I'll give you for test number two, how do you do what's called limiting reactants, determine the number of moles of product using the moles of each reactant, and the lower number is the answer. Again, determine the number of moles of product using the moles of reactant, and the lower number is the answer. So let's go back. I'll do this one, then I'll share. And now, first of all, what are you being asked to find? Before I do that, thumbs up, people. Do you see the problem now? Thank you. You're being, yeah, I better take the cap off my tablet pen, so it will work. You're being asked to find how many moles of water. You're given 2.417 moles of hydrogen and 1.111 moles of oxygen. And how do you do that? You determine for each reactant separately how many moles of the product. Now, if Dr. White were cruel, he'd make you do this in grams, but I've already done the previous one in grams, so I'm not, I usually never do that. Some instructors do, but I don't. So you're going to have two calculations. The first one is one of the reactants And you want to figure out how many moles of the product. And what do you do? Use your good buddy, your good friend, unit analysis. Whatever I'm trying to get to goes on top of the ratio. Whatever you're trying to get rid of goes underneath. It's not easy. You just have to remember that. And this is moles of water. This is moles of hydrogen. Where do I get these numbers? From the balanced chemical equation. Two moles of hydrogen. When there's no number in front, it's one. One mole of oxygen make two moles of water. So for every two moles of hydrogen, I make two moles of water. Remember, these are both exact numbers which do not play a role in determining how many significant figures you are determining, uh, your answer should be. Notice this is four significant here. I use my internal calculator. This is my answer. Now, I should have done this first. Make sure your units cancel out. Moles of hydrogen divided by moles of hydrogen cancel out because anything divided by itself equals one, and I'm left with moles of water. Now, you have to do this calculation for each reactant. I did hydrogen, now I'll do oxygen.
I start with moles of oxygen. I want to find out how many moles of my product, water. And now I'll use once again, unit analysis. Whatever I'm trying to get to goes on top. Whatever I'm trying to get rid of goes there. And now what do I do? Well, I write it in. And where do I get those numbers? I'll let you figure that out. Where do I get the numbers for ratio moles of oxygen, moles of water? Uh, time's up. You look at the balanced chemical equation. This tells you one mole of oxygen makes two moles of water. For every one mole of oxygen, I make two moles of water. I'm going to use my mental calculator. I think you can do that too. Remember, four significant figures, one and two are exact numbers. I get 2.222 moles of water. Now, What's the answer? We're trying to find out how many moles of water. And if you look at important information, we have the lower number of the two calculations we just did is your answer. Therefore, which is a smaller number? 2.417 or 2.222. And hopefully you all agree. Hold on. I'm going to I just sniffle the sneeze. Excuse me. This is your answer. So the answer is 2.222 moles of water. And this shows you which one of these is limiting. This, it turns out, runs out before this one, just like the pens and caps. And why don't you try this? Remember, calculate how many moles of each, how many moles of product are made with each reactant, and the lower number is your answer. And let me decode this for you. How many moles of ammonia are made? Uh oh, it says mad. I've never seen a mole get mad at me. That's a good thing. But, anyways, how many moles? Oh, I still have my sense of humor. Hopefully I'll never lose it. All right, how many moles of ammonia are made when you react 1.00 moles of hydrogen with 2.00 moles of nitrogen? Your turn. Remember, you have to set up two equations. Moles of reactant to moles of product.
one of these days I'm going to bring a recording of game show music, you know, how they end, ask a question at the end on the game shows, which I haven't watched in decades, and they have the music that goes, dun, 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 dun. Uh, no, you don't want to hear Dr. White sing. Those who finish early, please be patient. I try and give everybody time to finish. And when you're done, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. All right, I'll give you another about a minute to go. All right, let's do this one. All right, now let's look at the problem. What are we being asked to find? How many moles of ammonia are made? What are we given? Well, 1.00 moles hydrogen and 2.00 moles of nitrogen. And what do you do? Well, this is a limiting reactant. And if you look at, oh, excuse me, I just hiccuped. If you look at 
the important information for test two. I used to make students memorize this. Now I don't. How do you do that kind of problem? Determine the number of moles of product produced using the moles of each reactant. The lower number is the answer. So now what do we have to do? We do two calculations. For each reactant, you find the moles of the product. Remember, these are your reactants. The side is your product or products. And therefore, for one, well, I got hydrogen there, moles of hydrogen. We want to go to moles of product, which is ammonia, which we also figured out here. And now I'll use my good buddy, my good friend, unit analysis. Whatever I'm trying to get to goes on top of the ratio. Whatever I'm trying to get rid of goes underneath. Notice moles of hydrogen divided by moles of hydrogen equal one. Where do I get the numbers here? I look at my balanced chemical equation. For every three moles of hydrogen, I react one mole of nitrogen to make two moles of ammonia. So for every three moles of hydrogen, I make two moles of ammonia. And to notice three significant figures, exact numbers. If I do the math, I get 0 0.667 moles of ammonia made. Dr. White can do these things in his head sometimes. Now, we have two reactants. So we have to do two equations. Again, go moles of in this case, to react in nitrogen, two moles of our product, ammonia. And again, you'll use your good buddy, your good friend, unit analysis, whatever we're trying to get to goes on top of the ratio. Oh, by the way, I didn't write it all in. Whatever we're trying to get rid of, this should be moles, goes underneath. So I'll write those in. Where do I get the numbers that go in there? For every one mole, remember when there's no coefficient, it's the number one. For every one mole of nitrogen, we make two moles of ammonia. Coefficients are molar amounts. So for every one mole of nitrogen, we make two moles, whoops, sorry about that, for every one mole of, hold on, for every one mole of nitrogen, we make two moles of Ammonia, these are exact numbers, three significant figures, exact, exact. I think I can do the math. And your answer is the lower number, which is this. So our answer is 0 0.667 moles of ammonia. Oh my goodness, I just looked at the clock. Time flies when you're having fun with Dr. White and chemistry. And it looks like we're out of time. So remember, Thursday, I'll be going through the balanced chemical equation problem set for chapter seven. Don't forget to do the lab, which is also balanced chemical equation. Why? Because on test two, there'll be four problems. I got to write it this weekend, but it always is. 
that will have three points each balance the following chemical equations. And with that, my back is saying, please stretch me. So I'm going to say, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Gain gazun. Have a great couple of days. I'll see you on Thursday. Don't forget the hand in the lab. Sometime today or tomorrow, I'll post a new lab. It's going to be fun. And with that, gang is on. Goodbye.